not an unholy man. You're not an unrighteous man. You're not, you're not ungodly. You're just taken over by a spirit. You're, you're, you're crazy. You, you, that, sure, that, that's what sure. they, that, that's what I they said think. That you're Nebuchadnezzar myself. of the 21st century. I said that to myself, but Nebuchadnezzar was never holy. I think the question he wanted to ask me that I think will get the job done is, Dietrich, are you fornicating? Okay. And I would have said, Let that's none that. of your business. Okay, right. <laughs> thing on, on Love and Relations. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let me uh, drink some more water. <laughs> this is the only time I get thirsty. <laughs> I know God forgives me. If I sin, I confess to God and He forgives me. So why do I hide it from people? Because I don't believe they will forgive me like he does. My God! <laughs> Rejoice in the Word on the Road as a part of the interview series, and I'm here with a powerful, powerful man of God, who no matter what he tries to do to stay up under the radar, the radar would not allow him to stay up under there. Would you help me introduce your pastor to the world tonight, Pastor John F. Hunt Hanna. <laughs> Chicago! Oh. I am so excited to be uh, here. Um, I've known this uh, powerful man of God for a long time, a number of years, but I'm getting to meet him again on, uh, on this side of, of assignment and this side of, of greatness. And so I want you to call a friend and a neighbor, Instagram, tweet, uh, uh, um, Periscope, do whatever you have to do, but I believe that this is a night for those of you who have a calling on your life. And I wanna to minister to the great gathering of the misfits. And I want you to know that there is yet and still a place for you in the kingdom and in the body of Christ on tonight. I, I start off all of my, my interviews with uh, uh, what we call a one for one. It is how we uh, lay the foundation and develop the basis for what we're going to be discussing for tonight. You're smiling. And so I want to do a little one-for-one one with you. I give you a word and you tell me the thing that comes to your mind. Uh, uh, another word back. Help yeah. us, Lord. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so uh, uh, you ready to do this? Let's do it. Okay, let's do this for the glory and the honor of God. First, first, first give the name of your church. The name of our church is New Life Covenant Southeast. New Life Covenant Southeast. New Life Covenant Southeast. And what kind of a church is it? Um, it's a non-denominational. We don't... What, what, what is non-denominational? That we're not Baptist, we're not Catholic, we're not Apostolic, we're not Church of God in Christ. We're not Episcopalian, we're just Jesus. We're just Jesus. It's all like about him. <laughs> New Life Covenant Church of Chicago, Chicago. Okay, uh, this is our one for one. Generation. Generation. I give you one word. One or two. Or one or three. two words. Mm. Curse is broken. Wow. Culture. Culture? Yeah. Multi. Mm. Gang bangers. Right here. <laughs> With an X in front of it. Wow. Uh, perversion. The devil. Evangelism. Should be every church. 
Wow. Evangelism should be church. Evangelism should be every church. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community need Jesus. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Black lives matter. All lives matter. Black lives matter. Including gay, transgender, lesbian, white, alcoholic, drug addict. Um, You say it from, from the stance of what the world is saying, black lives matter. I say it from a pastor and an evangelist, all lives matter for the kingdom. Yes. I, I, happen to, I happen to agree with you a thousand percent that when the, and I understand the Black Lives Matter and understand everyone's assignment, everyone's call, but um, when in our community, blacks are killing more blacks than police officers could ever imagine, right. or the, the question of Black Lives Matter is, is it can be divisive and uh, it could, it could separate us, and it could be one of the assignments of the enemy to separate us again. Mm-hmm. And I think that uh, what you said, all lives matter, is, 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 is great. Uh, racism. Everywhere. Church. Not everywhere. <laughs> Church. <laughs> Not everywhere. <laughs> Black church. Help us, Lord. Elaborate if you could. Um, I've been in the black church all my life. And I saw the church turn from Jesus and turn to man. Mm. Uh, We began to build up uh, leaders and titles and positions. And it pulled us from from God, but drew our attention strictly to man. Um, And I believe and I pray that my assignment is to point the church back to him. Mm-hmm. Heaven. Heaven, mm-hmm. where I want to go. Well, we all want to go there, so elaborate on yeah. that. Heaven is our final destination. It's what we live for. It's amazing that we, so many people fear death, but you know where you're going is a greater place. Um, it's what we live for. We are focused on our eternity. And our eternity is greater than our present. Hell widens itself daily. It's amazing how the Bible would say heaven is for a prepared place and for a prepared people. But heaven, I'm going to say, hell widens itself daily because there's a question mark. And we have an assignment to empty hell. Mm. So every time it it has a question mark, that's why it goes wide. It it doesn't know what the number that's coming. That's why we as the church must be about evangelizing and getting as many as we can. Because I tell my church, we have to do our best to empty hell and to make sure that many don't go. So then what is hell? It's, 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 it's the non-believer's eternity. Mm-hmm. Just, as, just as I spoke here about heaven is, I, I know my destination. I know where I'm going. At the same time, I know where the non-believer goes because I was hell bound. Mm-hmm. I knew the direction that I was headed in, but he called me out of darkness. Yes. And when he, when he called me out of darkness, he shifted my eternal address. <laughs> that, that, is, <clears throat> that, is, that is beyond powerful, um, if, if, if there's a, such a thing of that, because the, the power of hell mm-hmm. is the absence of, of light. Mm-hmm. And light is one of the properties that we need in order to exist in life, Mm -hmm. even blind people can sense light. Mm -hmm. Scientists tell us, and blind people tell us that, though they can't see it, but they can sense it, so they know that it's nighttime, it's it's, it's daytime, they can sense it. 
uh, without that, you lose your bearings. And when you said he called you out of darkness mm -hmm. uh, uh, into light, the, 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 so is it possible to uh, be here and experience hell? Is there such a thing as hell on earth? Mm -hmm. um, no. Okay. You're not in hell. Because mm -hmm. once you go to hell, there's no place for you to be saved. You might be going through what you think is hell. And, which, and, which, and, and remember what I said. Which, which, is, very, which is very powerful, right. again, because one of the physical properties within the realm of life mm -hmm. is, it was just, just really, really powerful, is, is solid. Uh, without light and without solid, hell's a place where there's no place to lean, there's no mm -hmm. place to sit, it's a bottomless pit, you keep on falling, 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 falling. And I think what the enemy tries to do from time to time is to get us to think that we've experienced the worst mm -hmm. in, terms of, in terms of hell. So we, we got that covered. Right. And what you just said shook me in my stomach. Yeah. It's not, you might be going through, but it's not hell because it's not eternal. The key word is, you're going through it. It ain't hell, because you're not locked in that place. I tell everyone that says that they're going through hell, that you're just like Christ. You're going through your, um, your wilderness experience. He was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. And, his, and his, his assignment was, you have an appointment with the devil. But, you, but your ministry won't start until you come out of here. So there are certain things that God won't launch you into until you come through what you call that season of hell. I, I don't mean to stay too long on no. hell. I don't mean to stay too long on hell, but it's, it's a powerful, powerful thing because it's one of the things that has been dismissed out of right. the, the, the Christian experience. And um, it is now said that eight of the top uh, seminaries in the nation, 83% uh, of those who go through those, th uh, through those seminaries come out not believing in heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. So there are institutions that have God on top of it that is preaching against God in the name of God. Um, when you said it, you're not going through hell because it's not eternal, th that's another piece there because um, hell is a place of no hope. And as long as you got breath in your body, change can take place. <laughs> as long as you inhaling and exhaling, God got, ch got a chance. Salvation. Oh, my God, for everybody. Explain. <laughs> it's available for everybody. And it is up to us to make sure that we deliver the good news so that, so that he has the opportunity to arrest their hearts. Um, this salvation is something that's going to tell our church. We are not a gated community. Swing these doors open. Whosoever will, let them come. Because we have, we have been given. But you use the term, arrest our hearts. Arrest our hearts. Yeah. To the point that when we, when we invite them in, when someone comes in here, this is my assignment. I have one assignment. To get you into the glory of God. If you ever have a God encounter. Your life will never, never be the same. same. <laughs> John Hanna. <laughs> but let's go back to the word arrest. Okay. Because arrest in, um, in our understanding of the word is to be um, apprehended. Mm, love it. Locked up. Yes. So you believe that salvation He'll is a bondage. He'll you in a minute. Salvation is a Nobody bondage. got up one day and said, you know what I think I'm going to get say today? He snatched you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You this, got arrested. This ain't no non-denominational church. <laughs> this is a sanctified church. <laughs> you got arrested. Wow. He snatched you up in your jacked up situation and delivered you out of what you thought was hell. <laughs> it's 
so salvation is a type of bondage. Oh, yeah. Paul said, Take Paul said, my I'm yoke a, upon. That's it. Ah, oh, Take my yoke. Paul referred to himself as a slave of Christ. Yes. He is our master. We obey our master. You better. <laughs> <laughs> mom. Deceased. My mom is deceased in one of the hardest seasons of my life. Um, I grieved too long. I grieved too long. Is that possible? Oh, yeah. Save, sanctify, fill with the Holy Ghost. Is that possible to grieve too long for mom? Yep. If you don't get the necessary help. Help, help it's offered, but if you don't, some things, if you don't go get it, you'll live in it. And this is one of the reasons as a church we started a counseling center. I have a counseling service to help some people because I didn't have anybody to talk to, tell me what I was living in. Every Mother's Day I had a date with grief. Mm -hmm. That's too long. Because mm -hmm. no one told me how to come out of that thing. Mm -hmm. before, the, before Mother's Day come, begin to speak life, begin to resist the enemy, and he'll flee. But I was just, okay, it's Mother's Day. I'm about to give in to this thing. I would dive into grief. Mm. No, no, no. Not going to happen. Wow. A few nights ago, I got the telephone call that no son wants to get. My mom had a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. And so I spent Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, mm -hmm. at the bedside of my mother. And she came through, and then her heart stopped twice. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's in South Carolina, stabled, uh, in a stable situation right now. And you have to ask yourself the question with all the prayer that you do for people mm -hmm. and deliverance and breakthrough and so on and so forth like that, when things happen to you, you tend to ask God, where are you? Does he step back? Is he still there? Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is numb a part of his plan? Is, is grief a part of his plan? Someone is, someone is watching and with Christian television, you get more people that watch Christian television with grief and problems right. and pain. They don't watch Christian television for comedy. They watch it because they're going through and they believe that we have an answer for them. We do. You say what to that person tonight <laughs> that's going through this grief? You better lock in. You better lock in. It ain't over till it's over and it still might not be over. Mm. Um, I don't accept the facts because facts are the enemy of faith. Yeah. And we, we, we are a people of faith. And either you're going to believe it in spite of what it looked like, you better go in there and speak God's word. I, and I don't care if they die, at least you could stand on the fact that I stood on my faith. God, your will be done, but in the meantime. Mm. <laughs> and I think that, unfortunately, a lot of saints, I'm, I'm amazed at the lack of faith that is in the body of Christ. And why is that? Because we believe facts. You believe everything the doctor tell you. You believe exactly what you read on your credit report. I believe that the reason why there's a lack of faith in the body of Christ is because there's a lack of preachers who know anything about faith. Because faith, faith coming by, by hearing. hearing. <laughs> yes, sir. Right? And I think, I think that's... I Emotions think. don't move God. And a lot of times, I remember going through something, and I was about to get emotional. I was like, emotions don't move me. You better speak my word. Bring me to yes. remembrance of what I say. <laughs> And I got control of my emotions, and I begin to speak, speak the, the word of the Lord. Yes. And when, um, when he took the prophet and put him in the valley of dry bones, that is a hopeless situation. He said, okay, now can these bones live? And everyone that looks at a bad situation, the question is, can God revive it? Regardless of how bad it is, it is not over until it's over. Even if they died, I'd be like, hold on, don't take the body out right there. Give me a minute. I'm, the, it's, I'm a pit bull when it comes to faith. Father, or dad, whack. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let me, let, me, let, me, let me clear it up. I teach my church that if you're not careful when a parent is not there, you can, you can struggle with a sense of abandonment. And my father was not in my life the way that I would have loved 
for him to be there. My father was a gangbanger, drug dealer. My father ended up going to prison when he got out. It was my father. My mother trusted me to go over and spend a weekend with him, but he was the one that handed me my first joint. He was the one that uh, taught me how to give a shotgun when it came to weed. Um, he promised me that he was going to come to eighth grade graduation, didn't show up. High school, didn't show up. College, didn't show up. I'll be at your wedding, Preaching didn't to the show choir. up. My God. And none of those things he showed up at. And, but the moment I got saved, there was a gentleman in, 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 by the name of Edward Christian who snatched me, who kept his hands on me the whole time that I was in college. And even when I graduated, he handed me to Elder, which is now Bishop Campbell. And then he held me for 19 years. And then when he released me, I went to a Puerto Rican by the name of Wilfredo de Jesus. And the Lord said to me, I kept your father away from you. After he showed me that I couldn't trust him with, with you. you. I, my... I had to remove him to make sure that the generational curses weren't passed on. Um, so you were... You were never abandoned, you were protected. <laughs> when mother and father forsake you, I'm good. then the Lord will take you up. He'll take you and up. And that word in the Greek means to be preoccupied. I'm that God you. was preoccupied with making sure that you got to this particular place. There, I tell my church, I tell my church this, and this is for anyone out there that your parent is not in your life. And I see a lot of Christians struggling with the fact, and this is deep too, because then you start running around looking for these spiritual mothers and these spiritual fathers. And when you so open, and you so open like that, it, in the hands of the wrong person, they can take advantage of that. Will take advantage of it. So what the Lord showed me was, had to keep him away from you so that he didn't pass on generation curse. My father ended up dying in an abandoned building because mm. he had got a hold of some bad needles because he went from weed to shooting up. Mm -hmm. And here he was trying to blow the same demon down my throat, but God caught the smoke. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> And there's some people right now, there's some things that our family members have tried to put on us. God caught that thing. Yes. He caught that thing. God blocked it. I mean, you experienced it, but you don't have the same results no. as they had. Hallelujah. So, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful that, you know, that the Lord well, kept before me. You get to, before you get to grateful, because I sense in my spirit that there are thousands or tens of thousands that are watching and you're now ministering to to them in that particular area where, you know, you get caught up with the wrong spiritual person who mm. is spirited and not spiritual. Right. Uh, operating in witchcraft. Some witchcraft. Witchcraft and manipulation. You know, manipulation. Don't go over there. Don't go over there. Right. Watch right. this first night. And uh, this is why I said before, the, uh, before, before we, came on, uh, we came on air is that you have to make sure that uh, you do not allow the wrong person to speak into your life to move you from the right person because then you'll never get to the place that you're supposed to be. And um, when God is not preoccupied with you like he preoccup was preoccupied with you, you have some people who really, really end up in places that is really, really bad. And I just sense in my spirit that there are many of you who are watching tonight was just on the verge of giving up. Uh, there's hope for you that God has assigned someone to your life in spite of mom, dad, uncle, aunt, whoever left you, God has a plan. And I believe that it's time for that plan to unfold in their life. One of the things, if you really search people who might have gone through um, abandonment, family not being there, there's always been something in you for greater. Regardless of where you were born in, there was always something in you for greater. And it's almost like with Joseph, he dreamed in his father's house, but it couldn't be fulfilled under his father's roof. So God said, in order for me to birth this, I got to get you out of your daddy's house. I got to pitch you. Now, in order for me to get you there, and I got to get you from out of your, I'm going to have to take you through the pit. I'm going to have to take you to Potiphar's house. I'm going to have to take you to prison. And then I'm going to get you in front of royalty. But everything they t that they took from you can't be compared for what I have for you. Listen, Bishop. One of the greatest things that blessed me in that Joseph story is that when his father gave him the coat of many colors, the, bro the brother stripped him of his coat. 
But then when Pharaoh blessed him, he gave him many robes. Mm. You can have a coat. I got robes coming. And my father can't give them to me because he ain't got enough money for it. So I just say to anyone that feels abandoned and you feel as if your family hasn't been there for them, all things work together for your good. That thing. It, but it takes, a, it takes a certain age and a certain time in prayer, a certain time with God for your eyes to open. Because if not, you'll be walking around mad, angry, frustrated. You see other parents with their kids. See, I should have. Lord, I want to thank you. Mm. And that's what people need to know. God got you. Family. Um, my family, I'm like Jesus. Who is my mother and my father? This is my family. <laughs> I, have, I have siblings. I have um, four brothers. I have a sister. But when Jesus is sitting at the table, he says, he that doeth the will of the Father is my mother and my brother. Yes. And I make sure that I tell my church on a regular basis as a, uh, a father, as a pastor, they hear these words coming out of my mouth consistently. I love you, new life. I love you, new life. And then I believe in the power of hugs. So when I'm standing in front of my whole church, I say, give me a hug. What we do? <laughs> so that's what we are. Desperate. For Jesus. Eight five five seven three zero word. Eight five five seven three zero word. If you are going through crises and storms in your life, and you find yourself desperate, desperation is the trigger to faith that is going to bring you into an encounter with God that is going to blow your mind. Call the number at the bottom of the screen right now. The prayer warriors, prayer counselors want to pray with you. Even before the program go off tonight, get some literature in your hand because I believe that this is a night where the Lord is going to turn things for you. Desperate for Jesus. <laughs> Deliverance. Say that one more time. <laughs> you can't be cut up. Deliverance. Available. For everybody. So deliverance is what? Being free. Yeah. And free is what? From whatever chain, bondage, yoke that the enemy thought he had on you. There's nothing like being free. Not just from stuff, from people. Yeah. Got two more questions for you. All right. Two more. Uh, God. My everything. Wow. The devil. I hate him. <laughs> we have a pastor, her name is Pastor Nichols, and she has taught us. She's one of the, our oldest members, and she always say this in the microphone, I hate the devil. the devil. And so our church has this thing, we hate the devil. I want to talk to you a little bit about the devil. Have you ever met the devil? I lived for him for a while. He had a good grip for 17 years. Wow. Uh, when, you, when you met him, how was he? Every now and then, he still comes back because he knows that I am on his hit list. All right, but before, but, but before we go there, <laughs> before we go there, so you have met him. I've encountered spiritual demonic forces that I know that the devil uh, was coming for me. So you haven't met him? Everything that comes from him is a piece of him. Okay. So the piece of him that you met, how, how was he? See, see, I met him, and met he him. was kind to me. Oh, really? So I want to know, how was he to you? <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't really reveal himself until I came to Jesus. Okay. And my first... Um, 
attack came and out. And, of and that's very good. He, he didn't reveal he didn't himself. Reveal himself. Right, yeah. That's why I said he was kind to me. Right, right. But then when you became a traitor, because mm -hmm. you left him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when you left him, you brought all his secrets. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now you're able to tell everybody what he... Stuff. Yeah. yeah. So he hates you the way he hates me. Yeah. Probably, probably more. More so. <laughs> um, but, but I, yeah. I think that the church needs to understand, because this, this, this is a part of, uh, it's part of my book about Christian immaturity. We, we, we preach this gospel, and we have to be careful of hype. Like, every day going to be joy, joy bills ringing down in your soul. Everything going to be good. Then you get hit. And then when you get hit, that devil will be like, got him. Got him. No, no. You got hit because you're moving. Mm -hmm. He don't hit people that's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I teach our people that, listen, some of this, your spiritual immaturity, you're going to hit some pitfalls, but you got to get up immediately. Who is John F. Hanna? A man that loved God and loved people. Okay. I love God and I love people. H have you met John? Yeah. <laughs> Bishop, this is starting to sound like a schizophrenic moment. Um, <laughs> I better know him, I'm 51 years old. And there are many people who are sitting laughing right now who have not met themselves yet. Right. It is the, it is the number one problem that we have in Christendom mm -hmm. that we have preachers preaching to us that don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. And we trust them with our souls and they don't know themselves. I agree. Um, and, I believe that what has happened um, to you and in your life is, is one of those phenomenons. It's, I don't think it's something that can be taught. No. And, and you know, sometimes when things like this happen, you look up one day and you got 22, 23,000 members inside a church. And the guy thinks that, you know, well, I'm gonna go teach other people how to do it. And many times he can't even duplicate it himself. It's a God thing. It's, it's a God thing. Um, the which one of you did God trust this God thing with? Mm -hmm. we, we, talked about, we talked about the abandoned John. Mm -hmm. We talked about the John who got shotgunned. We talked about the John who had to be, was preoccupied by God and God had to place him in the hands of different people at certain times and then hide him in a culture where he was the only colored person in the entire culture and then brought John to this place to yeah. trust him with all different types of cultures. Right. Have you met him? Yep. I want to talk to him. That's the John that he wouldn't release until he was 40 because he knew that the young John couldn't handle this. The young, the young John would have been lifted in pride or thought that he so was it's all not, of that. So it's not so schizophrenic, it's not is so, it? Now that you oh. broke it down. <laughs> you know, I'm a good listener. Once you explain that you are, it. That you are. That, 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 once you explain it, then I can roll that's with your you. gift. Your gift is listening. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I tell everyone, um, I couldn't have handled this at a young age. And there was a part of me that I felt as if God had forgotten about me. And I felt like God was moving everybody else. And the hardest thing is that when you hit a certain age, you start looking at younger people that look like they're passing you by. Hmm. So there was a part of me that got impatient, but every time I got impatient, to God be the glory, he never let it work. So when I felt was rejection was really just um, a purging process. One of the reasons why I asked you that, uh, who is John F. Hanner and uh, have you met him, is because I always saw, I don't know the numbers, but even in the church that you was in, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but it's I always okay. get in trouble. Even in the church that you was in, I always saw you trying to give this to them, and they... I was them. ahead of my season. Yeah! 
the, the, the stuff you used to say and... I agree. <laughs> No, no, because a lot of times no, when people see things, when people see things, they think that is, is as a result of something that just happened just like that. And uh, if a tree is, uh, uh, you know, 30 feet tall, uh, rest assured it's been there for 100 years. Right. You might be just seeing it at that level, but it took right. time to get to that place. Right. And I saw your, your real gift, and I think that was the gift of administration, where you would just say things and they would, they would just miss it. And had they put those things into practice, my God. But I could teach a lesson from that. As a person that's gifted and you can see things, but you're under something, you must always remind yourself it's not yours. So even if you speak it and they don't do it, then you still bow to whatever they choose. Because if you rebel against it, now there's a whole other spirit thing that has come upon you. So the main thing, if you speak it and they didn't do it, you pocket it. Mm -hmm. That's good. You put it up. Now when I look at everything, every place that God has you, he has you for a reason. You're going to learn something. And you must learn from the good, the bad, and the ugly. Never think that you're wasting your time. Mm. Everything is a learning experience. So I learned from every place. I was, I was just at my old pastor's church. After 15 years of being gone, I was just privileged to go back with my church and preach for him. And I said to my church, let me introduce you what made me. Your secret sauce. This is it. This is what made me. Because I, I didn't know about deliverance. I didn't know how to arrest the house. Bishop Campbell taught me mm. how to go after God until you get a breakthrough. Mm. So they have the same tenacity, the same determination, the same desperation um, that I've passed on to them. All right, so I want you to go back to the part that you were just saying that you have to remember that when you're in another person's house, you're under them. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a part of the whole secret to your success here? That this is not your house, it's God's house, you're under him? I'm under God, but even when I was serving, you know me when I was serving Bishop Campbell. Yeah. Um, I was, we call them armor bears. We, yeah. didn't, have, we didn't have no titles then. You just you did the it. the craziest armor bearer we ever you had. You just do it. <laughs> you just do it. Whatsoever well, he tells it, you to do, do it. You do it. Yeah. Um, but I served him, and I loved serving him because the Bible says, he that is great among you must become servant. And we have a generation now, you just want to be great, but you don't want to serve. Mm. You want the platform, but you never carried anybody's Bible. You never carried anybody. You just want the microphone, but you never handed anyone the mic. Mm. Um, and I, I, know, I know the power of servitude. I know what it is to walk in another man's shadow and not be intimidated or, or, be, or made to be feel like you're not a man. I'm okay walking in your shadow because mm -hmm. it ain't my season yet. Right. The sun turns. Yes. Mm. <laughs> It's, yeah, with, you have a first man's anointing right. in the second man's position. Right. And so this is what's in the mind of God for you, right. but it's not your time yet. Right. Wow. Wow. All right, let me get back to my question. <laughs> because I, 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 I really believe that there's a, a drought in the land right now for the fathers and sons in the ministry. Um, we almost need a conference called Lost Sons. We're but Bishop, El Elijah never chased Elisha. Mm. Once he threw his cloak over him, something woke up in Elisha and said, I gotta keep up with this man. Yes. What I'm finding out in this younger generation, you want the Elijah to chase you. Mm -hmm. Even when they if, they, if they, if you feel like they're rejecting you, Elijah rejected Elisha. Yeah, he sure did. He said, stay here while I go to Bethlehem. Yeah. He said, I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. I'm going to stay right here with you. Yes. And yeah. sometimes the least bit of, of, of rejection or corrections, Elisha's are running. And we're wondering why they don't have the mantle of the anointing because you never stayed there long enough to get it. So now what we're seeing is fake preachers, fake prophets, that don't have a mantle, you operating under somebody else's a mantle. You look like them, you sound like them, you move like them, you never found your vein. 
because you didn't take the, the criticism and the yelling and the rejection and being dogged out and being talked about and people saying you ain't nothing but a flunky and the fake ones that told you to leave. Mm. Mm. If you stay there and endure it, when your season, when your season comes. So there's sons that are listening and you don't feel like you want it, that's part of the process. Wow. You feel like you're not appreciated, buckle up, part yes. of the process. Yes. Take it. You want the anointing? You got to go through all them feelings. That don't mean run. Mm. I can teach this one. Yeah, you're teaching it. <laughs> and I can teach it too, because I... I mm -hmm. we, before you were this, you were somebody's servant. Yes. You took some stuff. Yes. That the average person could never take. Clean the church clean my pastor's house, yell at you, scream at you. Say, say, sit in that chair. I sit in the chair. He comes in the office. What you doing in that chair? All that go with it. He was schizophrenic. He drove me, he drove me crazy. But you took but it. But I took it. I stayed there. I'm telling you. And the reward comes. And so what we're, what we're dealing with is a generation that's running. And then when you run, you run into the arms of the molester in the spirit. You run into the arms of, of those that commit um, bestiality because shepherds sleep with sheep. Yeah. Preach, man. <laughs> but I love God. No, 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 no. <laughs> Stay right there. Just for, just for a few moments so that a few folks can get free, set free, and come up out of foster care and get back home into the ministries that God has assigned you to. When I, when I, when I left my pastor's church, Elder Campbell, for 19 years, there were several pastors that called me, come on over here, come on over here. And the Lord said to me, they're only going to put you in the trophy case. Because they want to say, look what I got. Look what I got. I got John. I got John. And John so, was the man. John was I the man. John. I got John. Took him from Bishop. Yeah. I deal with it all you the time. You see what I'm saying? So the Lord sent me to someone that looked at me. And this is when you, he says, I see what's in you. I see what's on you. It don't scare me. It don't intimidate me. I'm going to sharpen it and then I'm going to plant it. And when he said that to me, I was like, this man is serious. And he, but he said, I'm not going to release you till I know you're ready. And I remember one time, you know, I was preaching all over. I could preach, but I didn't have a pastor's heart. You can, you, you can be good in one area, but when God began to stretch you, there's another heart that go with that. Mm. And when I said, God, I got offended when he said that to me. And then pray the Lord say, the fact that you mad proves you don't have a shepherd's heart. The fact that you angry because he's trying to, and I remember saying, okay, God, give me what I need. And in a retreat, this man, this, this Puerto Rican man had his hands lifted. I said, God, I need that heart up off of him. I need that heart up off of him. Mm. And with his hands lifted, I walked over and grabbed his hands in worship. And when I grabbed his hands, he pulled me close. I said, you done made the wrong move. I got up on them just like this. <laughs> I say, God, whatever is in this man, my God, to love your people that he want to reach the lost and feed the hungry and clothe the naked and not play church, give me the same heart he got. And from that day, I got a heart transplant. That clothes didn't matter to me, money didn't matter to me, um, big church didn't matter. I didn't get this because this is what I wanted. I got this because all I wanted was God. And then when, when he knew that, that, he, that all I wanted was him, he knew that he could trust me with this. Yes. Because I would bring them to him, not to me. Not to me. Coming up on Rejoice in the Word. You seen that there are people who have depleted the income of the church in order to promote themselves. Right. They're very good. But you know that you're not going to do that. I can't. 
I got to get our people you, home. You know you're not going to do it, right? Right. Right. So that's no, that, that's no longer an issue, a benchmark, or anything not, like that. It's not. I've had television companies come after me, stations rather, and it's always like, I'd rather, I'd rather spend thousands going after the loss. I'd rather buy another bus. I'd rather buy another bill. I want to, I'm different, man. I understand. I'm different. I understand. Um, I love God. I love his people. Yeah. So you don't think that television and social media... Identify Satan's strategies and block his attacks with the complete spiritual warfare package. I have put together a complete spiritual warfare package for you. And in the package, I want to give you some tools that are literally going to help you with the enemy. Experience victory over despair, bondage, fear, sickness, and more. Remove hindrances to answered prayer and receive God's promises for your every need. The Complete Spiritual Warfare Package will teach you biblical principles of spiritual warfare and give you the tools to reap the rewards of a victorious and joyous life. I want to teach you how to identify people who have disguised themselves as children of God but really agents for the enemy, small minions for the devil. Equip yourself for victory with the Complete Spiritual Warfare Package for your gift of only $60 or more. You'll receive the Warfare Ecology book, two spiritual warfare DVDs, Setting the Captives Free, and There's a Demon in My Bedroom. You'll also receive Bishop Bloomer's best-selling book, Witchcraft in the Pews, a vial of anointing oil and an anointed prayer cloth, and a bonus CD, The Prayer of Renunciation. All of this is our thank you to you for helping us take this gospel around the world. Or receive the Warfare Ecology book, along with There's a Demon in My Bedroom and Setting the Captives Free on DVD for your gift of only $35 or more. When you write to us, visit our website. churches in Chicago, actually one of the largest churches in the nation, you know, period. Um, but you're flying under the radar. <laughs> what, what are you scared of? Why no television? I mean, on, why not go for the world? Why not the television? message is pure. The message is What are you scared of? What are you scared of? How long, Bishop? <laughs> You making me scared of you? Hold on. <laughs> um, let me let me say this. Um, I am the, I'm a very focused person. Mm -hmm. uh, if you knew our testimony, and you look in this building, uh, we were only here for nine months, and then we had to move from here. <laughs> we ended up going to the University of Illinois at a building that could seat three thousand. So we do four services on Sundays: um, seven thirty, nine thirty, eleven thirty, and one thirty. Um, and he added to the church daily. So in this process, God has given us land to build. Yes. So I know that I have to get these people in a house. I have to sta stabilize them. I got to put the flag in the ground. Mm. And with that being said, um, I was careful because I'm saying this respectfully. I've seen some preachers and pastors deplete the funds to promote themselves. That they couldn't do the assignment that God has given these with the people. So I choose not to go on TV because I want to make sure that my people are stable in their house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Secondly. But I want to challenge you on firstly. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> a good challenge because I, 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 I think. I want to drink some, but I'm scared. Yeah. I might look like I'm still drinking wine. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. 
and Jesus turned the water. Uh-uh, no, go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't you drink. said that you seen that there are people who have depleted the income of the church in order to promote themselves. Right. They're very good. But you know that you're not going to do that. I can't. I got to get our people you, you know you're not going to do it, right? Right. All right. So that's no, that, that's no longer an issue, a benchmark, or anything not, like that. It's not. I've had television companies come after me, stations rather, and it's always like, I'd rather, I'd rather spend thousands going after the loss. I'd rather buy another bus. I'd rather buy another bill. I want to, I'm different, man. I understand. I'm different. I understand. Um, I love God. I love his people. Yeah. So you don't think that television and social media... So you don't think that television and social media is in the hands of a person who is passionate, yeah. in covenant with God, yeah. not going to use the resources to deplete the income of the church to promote themselves, right. is the greatest evangelism tool there is? It is. It's a great evangelism. I invited you to come to the Partners Conference. Oh, you wear me out this You came to the Partners Conference because I have an assignment on my life. And in the second half of, of, of my life, and I'm one of those guys who, for two years of my life, I shot up 20 minutes b- before it was time to preach. I know what, I know what real, you know I'm telling the truth. Right. I know what real deliverance is. Right. I know what real ministry is. And you came to the, to, to the program, uh, to the Partners Conference. Five minutes into the program, we were in trouble. The lines was jammed all night long. I could hardly stay on the platform. We had to go with it. It was, it was, it was amazing. And it became very, very clear to me. You cannot allow jacked up people mm. to hold you hostage to their jacked up lifestyle. If you are pure, and you are, the message that God put in you on how if you worship and praise God, he will move his throne to where you are. That is a message that has to be preached around the world. And there are some preachers who won't push you into it because they're laying on the couch and they want to be the only one on it. As many people as you think are praying for you, tend to everyone that is praying for you is praying against you. They don't want a voice like yours to come forth. And it is my job right. to and, make sure and I do you come forth in the name of Jesus. <laughs> now we're going to... Y'all shut up. We're going to stop this foolishness. Uh, Every... I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I've had this... This is a movie and it's it. a rerun. I've had this... I've had this discussion with great men and women of God. I was a part of them coming up. I can tell you the story of Paula White and Randy sitting in the room telling them, if you don't move in this moment, that door is gonna shut. And they moved in that moment, Jazz Scurlock. I can, I can go on, and Juanita Bynum, I can go on and on and on. I know my place and I know what is next. And in ev- just, just about every 10 years, mm. God raises up someone in the area of prayer, and intercession before he shifts things. And you're the man that he's raising up in this season, in this time, with something, I don't know what it is that's on you, but it's on you. It's God. And it's God's plan. And the, the funds will come, the money's come, the land is gonna be purchased, the buildings are gonna go up, evangelists are gonna rise up and come out of this, all of that. But I do not want, and you know what? I'm just going to begin now to believe that God is going to open up a door for about six months to a year for you to be on television for free. Now we talking, Bishop. Get up on fire. I just 
and believe God for that in the name of Jesus. So come on, let's set ourselves in agreement with that. Father, whatever you order, you pay for. We're believing you in the name of Jesus that a door to the nation will open up in Jesus' name, amen. I just believe it. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's a millionaire watching right now. There's a, there's a multi-millionaire watching right now who God is touching his heart right now. He can write one check and for the next year, you can test the waters and get this message out. Let me, let me say, I'm But if open. evangelism is on your heart, and it is, it is, it is, it is, this message of the gospel of the kingdom must be preached to the four corners of the earth, and then the end shall come. And I don't believe God just called you here to Chicago. I believe he called you to the world. And uh, you can't go into all the world without television. Amen. I'm done with that. Okay. I think. Well, but I think you should. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I, let me. I, I, I'm not scared. I mean, he knows that he can trust me. Yes. And if anything, I teach my people that wherever he takes me, he will get all the glory. Yeah. Whatever door he opens. When I look around here, this is all God. This ain't John Hannah. And, he, and, and I told him, I've had some denominations to come after me and some people, we want to make you one of our bishops. And I said to them, no. I said, because if I come to you, you're going to make me like your golden child. Look what we did. Mm -hmm. We didn't do this. Yes. God did God this. Did. And only God can get the credit for what he's done. So I'm open. You heard what he said tonight, right? Yeah. He's open. Let's believe God for that. Let's give God praise. In, uh, in our remaining moments, you wrote a book, and the book is entitled... I think we need to have a little bit of some desperate talks right now. Desperate okay. talks. What was the most desperate or trying time in your life? Um, desperation, the most challenging time was like when I said when I left Elder Campbell. Mm -hmm. That was the most challenging. Because mm -hmm. I had been in the place for 19 years. Mm -hmm. And then the Lord says, as he said to Abraham, get thee out of thy father's house and from among thine kindred and go to a place that I'll show you. I'm not going to show you until you leave. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to show you until you step out. And the hardest thing was to do was to step out. And when I stepped out, then it's like the, the sea opened. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I had no other choice but just to chase him. Because mm -hmm. if I chased after him and remained desperate for him, only eternity would tell what my future looked like. Mm. What does your future look like? This is a piece of it. According to your words that you just spoke, <laughs> it's not limited to Chicago. It's not. It's, it's so, um, Piece by piece. I mean, the Lord had told me, he says, in, the four, in your 40s, I gave you the city. In your 50s, I'll give you the world. He told you that. He told you that. Yeah. So then why did you fight me tonight when I was telling you? I just wanted to see if you were going to be persistent. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you never know which direction God's going to do what he's yes. going to do. Yes, yes. And so we could think we come in here for one thing. Yes. And he's doing another thing. What was the inspiration about writing the book behind it? I've been in church. I've been saved now for 34 years. And I've seen people born and raised in church who have no fire. I've never seen so many people that could come to church and just sit. And God could be in the room and you don't budge. You don't go to prayer meeting. You don't have a chase in you. It take a whirlwind to get you even to lift your hands. And I never want to get that comfortable with God. I never want anything in life to happen to me that I don't maintain my desperation because we go from glory to glory. And some people have gotten at this one glory and gotten comfortable. There's another level of glory beckoning for you. You came to our partners conference and I want to give the people an opportunity to see what you're talking about as it relates to from glory to glory. Watch this and we'll be back in a moment. 
and four o'clock in the morning, five to six hundred people come to prayer. And I've taught them how to dig. <laughs> Why am I here tonight? Why God got me in here? I don't know, y'all. I try to stay hidden, Jamal. I want to be a hidden secret. Because when you get on the platform, more warfare comes. And I've seen too many, too many people mount the platform and then they forget who gave them the platform. So I told God, keep me in the back. I don't want to go out front. But then the Lord said, but I need you to begin to speak to the nation and begin to tell them to open their mouth and give me what I'm used to. And I'm going to put you in environments that people are coming from all over the world. But then when they lift their hand, they're going to take the anointing back to the city that they came from. So everybody in this building, let's get ready for God to do something off the chain. Bananas. Unbelievable. Amazing. Let's blow your hair back off your head. Let's make you peel your eyelashes off. Let's make you take your shoes off. Let's make you lay on the floor. Let's make you go after God like you done lost your mind cuz i need him 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 come on begin to clap your hands and say yes lord come on clap your hands for a few minutes come on just say yes lord yay so when glory hits the place It hits it in a way, especially for God's people, because we thought that we had to go to find God. And you just got finished teaching us that if we open up our mouth mm -hmm. and bless him out of a pure heart, pursue him with that chase and that passion and that desperation, mm -hmm. God sends angels to pick his throne up and bring his throne to where you are. Right there. And I want you to know who are watching right now that God wants to pick his throne up and bring it to right where you are. And if it's healing you need, he wants to come right where you are. Deliverance you need, he wants to come right where you are. Debt cancellation, he wants to come to right where you are. What a phenomenal message. Talk about the glory. Oh. I love, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm addicted to his glory. Um, I cannot imagine living my life without his glory. Uh, it's where I get my strength, it's where I get my hope, it's where I get my vision, it's where I get my drive, it's where I get my validation. Um, I am addicted to God's glory. And so re religion don't move me. Mm -hmm. Positions and titles. All I want is his glory. Mm -hmm. And so I am a glory chaser. Mm -hmm. um, I would do whatever it takes. I pray that we, I, my goal is to, I teach our church this. All I need y'all to do, get in his presence. When we get in his presence, it's a wrap. Nobody have to lay hands on you. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody have to. When you get under that glory cloud, all you need is going to be done right there. Yes. This church is, I mean, we do crazy things just to make sure that we lock it. Like, it's a, new, it's a new church, but it's an old school church. We do mm. shut-ins. Mm. We do prayer about 12-hour prayer meetings. Mm. Um, we make sure we do, we do prayer in this room um, twice a month at 4 o'clock in the morning because we go after God because he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. I mean, we go hard in worship because we've been taught if you worship God, don't just come to church with your hands out. You come with your hands up. He'll take you from a here to a here. But we go hard to make sure that we give him what he's used to. You must create the atmosphere that God is used to. What's next for you and your ministry? Well, in 2016, two things. We're going to um, definitely open up a daycare center. <laughs> and everything that I do is mission-driven. Yes. Because if I can get my hands on your kids, then I'll get you. Amen. And it's a lot of young girls who are having babies that need the church. Wow. Um, I told them I'm setting up a room at the daycare center called the, um, the grandma room but nothing but rocking chairs. And I'm gonna go get older women and all your only responsibility is go in this room and hold these babies 
and rock and pray. Rock and pray. Um, everything I do is mission driven. And this daycare center is going to open in January. Wow. And then we're building a church, to God be the glory. But it's not built like a regular church. It's built like a performing arts center. Mm. Because my desire is to bring the arts back to the community. I am an urban ministry. And unfortunately, out in Chicago, if you want to see something nice, you got to leave the city and drive to the suburbs. You won't have to drive that far. Mm. You won't come right here. Wow. And you're going you're gonna to see first class, you're going to experience first class, and you're going to encounter God. Wow. The Lord said to me, the only way that some of these people will see it or experience it is if you show it to them. If you don't bring it to them, they'll never see it. They're not going downtown. Bring it to the house. Two things and then we close. And I, w I just want to shake your hand. This, this was great tonight. I, wasn't that great? Okay. Yeah. If you've seen any of my interviews, I always close out by throwing some names of great men and women of God and you expound upon, upon them. Just before I do that, I want you to take a moment and minister to pastors, particularly women in ministry, who just absolutely have no covering. And um, for various reasons, but they, they have no covering. 87% of the churches in the United States of America was planted by women. Only 3% of them in the 21st century is actually pastored by them. They birthed it, the organizations came in, called them little missionaries, took their babies from them, gave it to someone that didn't even know how to nurse babies. There's a rebellion now amongst the female ministries and the churches are now popping up all over. They wanna take care of their children and they're uncovered. And because of this, they are producing illegitimate sons and daughters, throwing them into ministry too soon. Uh, churches, three, five, eight, 10, 15 people, and all the 15 are preachers and the church still not growing. Instead of killing them, I think we need to catch them, bring them under a, co a covering, nurse them, because greatness is on the inside of them. Mm -hmm. And I want you to take a few minutes and minister to them. I think you can speak to that. Number one, you have to find someone um, that's not going to cut your wings off. A true shepherd will pluck your wings, take the dead feathers off and pluck them. So when your wind comes, you'll have no dead weight on you. It's great. And so you must find someone who can pluck you, not cut you. Mm. And when your wind <laughs> comes, they won't hold you in the nest, but they'll push, push you out, out there. Yeah. Because they want to see you fly. And then just by chance, if you don't fly, they know how to come out the nest and catch you before you hit rock bottom, take you back in the nest and sit there with you and keep plucking, plucking. to get you ready. Um, if anything I say to people is that sometimes you might think you're ready and you're not. And when you think you're ready and you try to fly, just climb back in the nest and know that he's not done plucking you yet. Mm. Um, I tried to fly. I tried to force myself to fly. And thank God he didn't let me. Mm. Delay does not mean denial. Yes. And many times you can feel like it's not that it's going to pass you. He is God. And you must hold on to what he gave you. This is what I teach people. When Joseph had a dream, he only dreamed twice. He never dreamed again. Yeah. It was up to Joseph to keep up with those dreams. It is up to you to hold your dream and not give up on it mm. and know that it's going to happen. But again, get the right people and don't chase. Do not chase. Please, I beg anybody, don't chase gifts and talents. When you get done, you need an anointing. Yes. 
There's a lot of people out here, they got gift, they're gifted, they talented, they have no oil. In the day that we live in right now, you can't preach, teach, or do nothing without the oil of God. You need oil. You need oil. When you get done running around doing all of that stuff, you need the basics. You got, you got to get somebody to teach you how to lock in prayer. You got to get somebody to teach you how to travail. You got to get to somebody to teach you. Then you, then you got to pray for revelation because anything you preach it from, it's already, they've already heard it. That's it. That's what's, it. What's, what's the word that God's given you for right now? So it's, it's available. Please, I am a living example that God will take you the long route to get you to your promised land. Will you be a covering and a voice for folks like that? Oh, most definitely. I, 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 I'm called to those. I believe that. that yeah. yeah, I believe that. I'm called for That's that. why I ask you to minister to them. I, see, I think there's a difference between a, a person who is graced to do something and a person who's anointed to do it. And this is the problem that we've been having in the church. A lot of times when the church first starts, you have people who are graced to do certain things but not anointed for it. And when the folks who are anointed to come in, the folks who was graced to do it won't move. Mm. I agree. I agree. That's the gifts and the talents versus the anointed. Right. And the person who's anointed to do something ain't going to fight you. They're not going to fight you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to chase you. They ain't going to chase you. They ain't gonna, They're not going to chase you. Yeah. But can I show you the kind of generation that God is raising up? Yes. Can we get, can you give me Valencia? And can you get me this band? I want to show the world. When it's all said and done, when you get done feeling however you feel, you're going to have to find your place in worship. You're going to have to get around some people God will send you around a group of people who are desperate like you desperate, hungry like you hungry, and he will, he will feed your desperation. We're done talking, right? You do your thing. Bishop, I mm -hmm. want the world to see this. I'm desperate and I need you. Come out here, Valencia. Follow his leg. Come on. I'm desperate, and I need you, and I am crying. Just watch these people do new life. Out to you. <laughs> I'm desperate, and I. Take the song. She
855-730-WORD. I'm desperate for you. I'm crying out to you, Lord, tonight. I need your presence like never before. I command the Holy Spirit to come on you tonight in the name of Jesus. Spirit of suicide broken tonight in the name of Jesus. Spirit of suicide broken tonight in the name of Jesus. We release healing for your body and rest for your soul. We destroy the yokes of the devil tonight in the name of Jesus. For you were wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we were. We are healed tonight in the name of Jesus. Now get up from where you are. Pick up the phone and call the number at the bottom of the screen and say to the prayer counselor, I'm desperate. I need Jesus in my life tonight. I need a breakthrough in my life tonight. I'm desperate. Come into my life, God. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. Give me to know that I have life eternal. And I will worship you from this night forward. If you just prayed that prayer, you just got born again. Get up. Go to the phone. 855-730-WORD. 855-730-WORD. The word of the Lord is going to change your life tonight. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I'm desperate. I and I need you. I'm desperate. And I need you. And I'm crying. And I'm crying. Come on, everybody, open your mouth and say. Music return to sound. Lord, on the double, see on the double side. He ran the la 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 Put the travail back in our belly. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Hey. We give you glory. Send the rain. Get under the bosa.
so, so I say to you, Bishop, I say to you that God's raising up a group that all we want is him. But if we never, if we never get a mansion, if my name is never known, Hallelujah. All I need is you. Thank you, Jesus. All I need is you. And the way our church is set up, we'll do this for hours. We'll do this for hours. Even after church, we have to put them out because they're addicted to his glory. So my prayer is anyone that's watching this on Word, let's go after God. Let's bring the church back to him and let us get out of the way and see God work in a mighty way. 855-730-WORD. You've experienced it. I've experienced it, and oh, yes. now the yes. world has got to experience it. So we see you one more time on the interview series, Rejoice in the Word on the Road. Let us rejoice here tonight from Chicago. I'm desperate for you. Thank you, man of God. Thank you, man of God. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Your faithful seeds and your faithful support makes it possible for us to do programs like this. So I want you to sow a seed. The seed that you're going to sow tonight is a faithful seed of $58, 58 promises in the Word of God, a dollar on every promise. We're believing God for miracles. This $58 is going to help me carry this uncompromised gospel of the kingdom around the world, continue to dig wells, continue to minister to orphan children, to do the kingdom's work. Thank you so much for jo joining in and tuning in. I'm excited in this place because the presence that I feel in this room right now, I haven't felt that kind of presence since the 70s, when the glory of the Lord used to come down. I'm desperate, I'm desperate, I'm desperate for you. My God, my God. God oh, bless you, let's give the Lord a praise. Let my fear, let's go. Let my fear by the side of the road to hear you speak, won't let go. Fall to my knees as I lift my hands to pray. Ah. Found every reason to be here again. The Father's love draws me in. All my eyes want to see is a glimpse of you. Because all I need is you.
Identify Satan's strategies and block his attacks with the complete spiritual warfare package. I have put together a complete spiritual warfare package for you. And in the package, I want to give you some tools that are literally going to help you whip the enemy. Experience victory over despair, bondage, fear, sickness, and more. Remove hindrances to answered prayer and receive God's promises for your every need. The Complete Spiritual Warfare Package will teach you biblical principles of spiritual warfare and give you the tools to reap the rewards of a victorious and joyous life. I want to teach you how to identify people who have disguised themselves as children of God but really agents for the enemy, small minions for the devil. Equip yourself for victory with the Complete Spiritual Warfare Package for your gift of only $60 or more. You'll receive the Warfare Ecology book, two spiritual warfare DVDs, Setting the Captives Free, and There's a Demon in My Bedroom. You'll also receive Bishop Bloomer's best-selling book, Witchcraft in the Pews, a vial of anointing oil and an anointed prayer cloth, and a bonus CD, The Prayer of Renunciation. All of this is our thank you to you for helping us take this gospel around the world or receive the Warfare Ecology book, along with There's a Demon in My Bedroom and Setting the Captives Free on DVD for your gift of only $35 or more. When you write to us, visit our website at